In this video, I want to talk about CRT settings. What actually happens inside your CRT? How it actually affects, for example, uh, the scan line's thickness or the lack of the gaps between the scan line. Some of them can even affect the lifespan of your CRT. So why do they? Well, I actually had something. I actually look into the uh, my PVM, my Sonic PVM, and it looks warm. A bit too warm and I kind of use you know for my with my VA display with my other display with the other display in the living room uh, and my other CRT to see something you know in different colors so I asked myself well maybe I have an issue with my PVM after all this is not a new uh, CRT now the many things which I'm not going to cover in depth here but they can be color temperature settings or maybe RG, uh, RGB bias or cutoff maybe a, a weak blue electron gun I mean aging phosphor so it can cause white to look yellow or even red or even a component drift anyway I decided to check out the settings of my monitor there's also the knobs and the OSD I was a bit scared to use it at first, uh, but again, uh, come on, I need to learn everything and maybe, you know, I can actually optimize the picture to be even greater. Now, some of the things are not relevant because I'm using RGB. Uh, if I use, for example, a component or this video, it will be more relevant. So there are these buttons, enter, exit, plus, minus, it's very easy to understand what each one does. Now, story short, in my case, I needed to go to the color uh, uh, temperature and change it because by default, it was more on the, well, accurate one which is the d65 and uh, which is warmer d93 is actually uh, cooler and particularly for super my wall i actually prefer it to be cooler than warmer now we're just changing the settings i ask myself well what actually happens behind the scene maybe with other settings and does it have any negative implications on my monitor i mean i want to learn i want to know more so i di dive deep into it and just if you wanted, you can see the difference here, just kind of alternate between the two, D65, D93, so you can see the difference. Now there's also option to change the uh, bias and the gain, again, just in case your blue electron gun is weak, I need to compensate for that. Just for general knowledge, you can check out the left side, uh, you know, just if you want to know more. I mean, there's a starting point, but just so you know, this is possible just in case your, well, PVM not in a good shape. But if you are making changes, make sure to write it down. So just in case you want to, you know, reverse back to the previous settings. Now, all of these settings, whether it's brightness, chroma, phase, aperture, have some kind of direct impact on the beam spot size, blooming, and the perceived sharpness. But just to be more transparent, both of these uh, CRTs using Sony Trinitron technology. So even this structural distinction also dictates the beam characteristic, the phosphor uh, excitation, and ultimately the texture of the displayed image. Now the modulation of the again the, the video signal that drives the uh, the cathode. Uh, again, there are no discrete pixels in the horizontal axis. Instead, there is a continuous variation of beam intensity as it sweeps across the scan line. So a high voltage corresponds to a high beam current, uh, bright white, for example. Well, a low voltage corresponds to a low beam current, maybe dark gray or black. Now, what you see here is kind of a sterilized view, of course, but in reality, it kind of acts like more like a soft marker. So as you turn up the brightness, the beam current, uh, the beam gets fatter and, and fuzzier. And this causes fine details to blend together, reducing the overall sharpness of the image. Now, on top of that, to make the picture brighter, you have to pack more electrons into the beam. However, all electrons have the same negative charge, so they naturally repel each other, like trying to force, for example, the matching ends of two magnetics uh, together. So the more electron you force into the beam to increase the brightness, the more they push outward against each other, and this causes the beam to puff up and expand. So this is why we have a trade-off. So you can have a dim, razor-sharp image or a bright, softer image, but it's physically difficult to get both. Now, this is also uh, why uh, high voltage uh, regulation is important. If you think of high voltage as speed, it pulls the electron towards the screen so fast that they don't have time to push each other out. So if a, there is a good regulation, the voltage stays strong even during a bright explosion of flashes. I mean, the beam stays tight and sharp. If there's a bad regulation, the voltage basically sags. So when the screen gets brighter, the electrons slow down, spread out, and the image blooms, get blurry. 
Now, in professional video monitors, PVMs, they are famous for having these over-engineered, yeah, in quotation, power supplies that maintain perfect high voltage regulation. So on a consumer TV, a bright explosion might cause the whole image to physically expand or breathe, again, to a very slight degree, right? Uh, or just get this slightly larger and blurrier. Now, this is also, again, very prominent in uh, BVMs that utilize sophisticated feedback loops and heavy duty power supplies to maintain rigid voltage stability. And this ensures that, they, for example, a full white screen maintains the same geometry as a black screen, which again, very important for professional use. Now, consumer CRTs are less advanced compared to PVMs and BVMs. This is why they exhibit this breathing or blooming where the picture size fluctuates with brightness. All right, so now let's go back to the monitor settings and their physical effects. So, so for example, the brightness knob is, well, it's kind of misleading. It actually controls the black level. So it said the baseline voltage, basically, it decides exactly when the electron gun should turn off to create black. So the correct settings will be something uh, like, uh, for example, the beam turning off precisely at black and the screen is dark, but you can still see shadow details. Now, if it's too low, the beam turns off too early and dark gray details can be crushed and disappear into solid blacks. If it's too high, the beam never fully turns off. Areas that should be black still glow gray and washing out the image. So in other words, the electron gun continues to emit weak stream of electrons even when the signal dictates black. And the way you can easily see it is just because the, the, the background scan area would just kind of glow gray and destroying basically contrast ratio, ratio and often making retrace line, the diagonal lines of the beam returning to the top of the screen very visible. Now, when it comes to picture contrast, uh, for example, on my PVM, I'm going to show an example in a moment. There's a knob for it. Uh, this controls the white level. So while well, brightness sets the floor, the black, picture or contrast sets the ceiling, the white. So it acts like a volume knob for the light output, controlling how much energy is pumped into the bright parts of the screen. And when you increase the picture or the contrast uh, setting, it directly increases the peak beam current, which also leads to beam spot expansion, as I mentioned earlier. However, while you know you might find, of course, uh, the higher picture or high contrast settings makes the image more vibrant, it does degrade focus and sharpness due to the spot blooming. And when it comes to professional calibration, it involves maximizing picture quality uh, only to the point before spot expansion destroys the skin line structure or induces geometric blooming. I think also not uh, less important to know is uh, excessive contrast settings actually accelerates cathode wear, so the cathode material is stripped away faster at high emission rates. So this basically can lead to dim picture and poor focus over a lifespan of the tube. So let me show you an example. There's a contrast knob here on my Sony PVM. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to adjust the, uh, the contrast to two extreme. So you can see how it actually also affect the gaps between the scan lines. Something can just call it scan lines. So again, the more energy into the beam where the contrast is higher, it makes the beam physically fatter, causing blooming. So high contrast, thinner gaps, low contrast, thicker gaps. However, maybe it's not really a great thing to demonstrate this on the PVM because again, if you have a, a high voltage, uh, you know, better regulation of voltage, it's uh, less uh, visible, less prominent. But this is exactly the advantage of a PVM, right? You can have a bright image that is still sharp. And Trinitrons in general use high quality dynamics focus system. So as the beam current increases, which usually blurs the spot, the TV can adjust the focus voltage on the fly to keep the beam tight. So basically fighting off the blooming effect much better than cheaper tubes. And aside from that, I'm using also a 14 inch one. So uh, the electron beam is already incredibly tight and the scan lines are very dense. So blooming again is physically happening, but it is kind of more microscopic. So if you look at the 27 inch or 32 inch TV, the beam has to travel further and it's naturally wider, making the expansion defects much easier to spot with the naked eye. Now there are other settings and I'm not going to cover all of them here. But when it comes to bloom, uh, again, bloom is a technical defect or characteristic that caused by the CRT's electron beam expanding when it eats very bright areas. Now, or the voltage sagging under load. Now it's driven by the brightness intensity, the luminance, not color temperature. Having said that, if you use cool, so uh, cool settings like the uh, 9300 Kelvin, uh, this often drives the blue electron gun harder to achieve a higher 
poppy or white point. And this is usually results in a brighter overall image than the warmer or the warm uh, 6500 Kelvin setting. So since higher brightness equals more bloom, cool settings can indirectly make blue more obvious if the contrast is maxed out. But it's incredible seeing how things are well controlled uh, on a, a professional video monitor on the PVM. And this is from wide array because of the uh, regulated beam core, the better focus circuitry, uh, the less bloom at high brightness, and it was designed for low high energy operation. And actually stay in align with actually what I tested on my PVM. And this is, I think, why broadcast monitors can stay sharp, very sharp, uh, even when driven hard. But of course, phosphor decay and electron gun aging can have a, a negative effect. And this is why when playing with different settings, this can have a sometimes direct or sometimes indirect effect on other parts of the image. So there are situations when you're using a cheap CRT, a cheap CRT TV, high brightness can actually destroy sharpness. But on the other end, you might accept that sharpness also comes from darkness. So you might keep the picture contrast, for example, set moderately low to prevent the electron beam from bloating and erasing the scan lines. Or to be more accurate, the absence of the scan lines. But at the same time, I care about the lifespan of the tube. So it maybe kind of tone things up a bit. And when I actually play in a dark room, I actually need to lower uh, the brightness as well. So in some way, it also helps prolong the life of the CRT. So the next time you play around with a, your uh, either it's PVM, BVM, or your consumer CRT, your TV settings, be aware there's going to be some some direct or indirect implications both in the image quality, but also by the way of the lifespan of the tube. Now the last thing that I said for last, just kind of a little note that I want to share, and this is very of course subjective and my personal preference. Just for example, this scene on a Sony consumer CRT with score RGB and the one chip zero two, absolutely perfection. I want to tell you when I saw this, I was shocked, but some games looks perfect on PVM. And by that I mean intended or not, they bring something and experience that feels new. You know, I actually feel, I think that it feels old. It reminds me of this, you know, the glossy gaming magazine that they used to read back in the days. I mean, those glossy papers, like I'm playing a game on it. So it's kind of a new experience for me, but I think it's embedded in nostalgia. Anyway, I love it. So in certain games, I definitely prefer playing on the PVM than on my consumer CRT TV. And many of the settings I actually want to adjust and try to perfect that specific look that I just so much enjoy. I think it's also maybe just not because of the reason that I just enjoy uh, watching a game on a glossy display, for example. So it's a combination of things. But just so you know, it doesn't mean that specific game is just perfect for this one actually some of the scenes in some of the games some of the areas actually prefer playing on now this is true also for very detailed game with lots of texture that for me can look quite messy on a, a small crt and even quite fatiguing but there are many games that from for example from sega and Capcom, they were built for high-end display that provide much more sharpness and clarity than the standard home television because they were designed from the get-go for arcades and on PVM, it will make the 2D pixel art look crisp and so beautiful rather than blurry. I mean, I haven't tried them, but I read them, for example, like Street Fighter 3, Third Strike, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, uh, Dark Stalkers, Vampire Savior, uh, Virtual Fighter 2, Daytona USA, and especially many fighting game uh, shoot em ups and, and beat em ups, uh, many of them are going to look amazing on a PVM. So, for example, if you take fighting games, you know, sharpness can help you even see frame perfect animation and move cues. If you focus on shoot em ups, you know, clean pixel make it easier to dodge tiny projectiles. And in beat em ups, you know, higher contrast lets you see details in dark and busy backgrounds. So, it is nice having PVM around. Because for some games, it really gives you an amazing experience. And for some games, it actually was designed to be better. Some of the arcades game that I mentioned. And for some, you're just going to like it better because how it looks. And don't, don't forget PVMs. Well, I still, I still not BVMs. And you can also use them with composite cables or S video cables to kind of make it even, you know, less sharp. But you're still going to enjoy many of their benefits. And basically, that's it. Waiting for your comments below about that. Thanks for watching, everybody. Also, consider subscribing to my channel. Anyway, I'm just going to be with the outro. Enjoy.